Hi everyone, here again at the Australian Army Tank Museum in Pakapanyal, about uh, 120 kilometres north of Melbourne, and taking a look today at um, some of the Japanese armour um, and other World War II era armour in the collection. So this is the uh, Type 97 uh, Shinhoto Chiha tank, which I've done a video on before, but I want to come back today and um, and put some more information down because uh, I was surprised to find it here last time and didn't have a lot of background information with me at the time. So this was what the Japanese termed a, a medium tank that they employed um, during World War II. But I guess when you look at what it weighed, it was probably more like what you would see with an M3 Stuart, um, sort of in the 15 to 20 ton type, uh, type range. But nonetheless, they termed it a, a medium tank. And this version that's shown here is an upgraded version of the original Type 97 Chiha. Now this new version um, was designated the Shinhoto Chiha or the new turret Chiha because it had an, uh, an updated turret, substantially redesigned and a new um, main armament um, that, was, uh, that was fitted to it. Um, so this new turret, um, in addition to having new armor, was bigger, was capable of um, having a crew of three in the turret, so capable of having a, a sort of commander um, loader gunner configuration in there, though it was still tight and uh, they didn't always employ the, um, didn't always employ the loader, um, but nonetheless it was a redesigned um, uh, 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 turret. Now um, that, that sort of basic configuration of workload was similar to what you saw in a lot of German vehicles, you saw that in the Panzer III, you saw it in the Panzer IV, and um, you also saw it in, um, in most US vehicles. And so it was considered kind of the standard way of, um, of laying out a, a vehicle. Now, this particular turret housed the high-velocity 47mm anti-tank gun. Um, that replaced the 57mm gun that was on the, uh, the original um, Type 97 Chiha. Now, while that, while that was a 57mm, it was um, largely an infantry support gun. So um, here we have a smaller, uh, smaller gun, at least, in terms of, uh, at least in terms of bore, but it had a much higher velocity and it could fire an AP round. Um, rather than the high explosive focused um, 57 millimeter that it um, that it replaced, so um, muzzle velocity of this gun here was about um, 800 meters per second, which, which was comparable to a lot of other um, um, anti tank guns around from the mid war to late war period um, in the um, in the world. Now the reason why the Japanese um, started with a 57 millimeter and then and moved on to this 47 millimeter is that early in the war as a medium tank. They, um, they, they felt that they'd be encountering primarily infantry forces and, uh, and as such, a uh, 57 millimetre uh, gun, you know, relatively low velocity um, firing um, HE rounds would be enough. However, the Japanese encountered Russian forces in 1939 um, in uh, uh, the battles of um, uh, Kelk and Gol and um, found that that gun was incapable of dealing with um, even the light BT tanks from the, uh, from the Russians. And uh, as such, they knew it was time to, to get an upgrade in place so they could deal with some uh, armor. So hence, we get this redesigned turret with the, um, with the improved um, AT gun. So this was designed in 1939-41 and into production in, uh, in 1942. And there were about 930 units were produced with this, this turret and this, um, and this gun. Um, the smaller original version of the Chiha um, with the 57 millimeter gun saw production of about uh, 1,160 units. So this version of the um, tank um, with the redesigned turret wasn't available at the start of the uh, Japanese advance through Southeast Asia in um, late 41 and, and early 42, but it did see service um, sort of in mid 42 in the, um, in the Philippines as the uh, Japanese were mopping up um, uh, the US forces in that area and saw, for, saw engagement um, during the uh, the advances um, against the Japanese later in the um, later in the war, um, so that's pretty much where it was used, as well as being used in um, in the Japanese battles in um, in China. Um, so this 47 millimeter gun was capable of engaging um, uh, light tanks such as the uh, M3 and, and M5 Stuart, effectively with their amount of armor, but couldn't really deal with with an M4 Sherman um, at least frontally. So it could get through the side and rear armor of a Sherman. But but, but, but even this upgraded gun in the new turret couldn't really deal with um, couldn't really deal with Sherman's um, uh, on a frontal armor um, penetration uh, penetration basis. In addition to that um, to that main gun, you've got um, two 
uh, two machine guns mounted in the uh, vehicle type 97, 77 millimetres. So one in the bow there in a, uh, in a ball mount and one on the rear of the turret, which we'll take a look at later. So this turret could be spun around 180 degrees to, 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 to bring that um, rear mounted machine gun to bear at the front of the vehicle when, uh, when, when in, in an infantry, um, infantry support um, role. Um, so about 18 tonnes weight, top speed, 38 kilometres per hour, utilising a, a Mitsubishi um, V12 diesel that was, uh, was air-cooled, developed about 125 kilowatts, that engine, and was capable of delivering, as I said, um, about 38 um, kilometres per hour. Relatively lightly armoured, only 25 to 33 millimetres, and uh, you can think that the Shermans that they were going up against had, um, you know, three inches of armour in, uh, in a lot of places, um, even, um, even early in the war. Now, the suspension on this tank's quite, uh, quite interesting. You've got uh, six road wheels, um, which are mounted in an interesting configuration. Um, the, the road wheels, um, sort of two through through five, are mounted um, onto uh, onto bogies, and uh, so you can see here that this this forms one bogey, which is on a, uh, a what's called a bell crank, which is a, a pivot that will pivot about the um, centre. And you can see the front of the bogey has one road wheel, and the rear of the bogey has. Um, has two road wheels in this particular case, so there's one missing from the uh, one missing from the inside, and the articulation of that uh, that bell crank as it pivots is via um, this linkage which goes into this this tube here, and behind that tube is um, springs. Um, and similarly, um, in the uh, second bogey with road wheels, uh, let's see, road wheels uh, three through five, you've similarly got a bell um, a bell crank. Um, configuration on the bogey, and that also goes into the uh, the other end of the uh, the spring, and then the front and rear road wheels, they're also they're on their own pivoting arms and have their own uh, their own spring. So it's an interesting configuration, um, and one which the Japanese used in their medium tanks throughout the war, and um, a very interesting way of uh, of doing things. So you've got return rollers, um, uh, some some return rollers here, um, three at the top. You've got front drive um, sprocket and front final drive. I'm um, going to mention the rear-mounted um, uh, V12 diesel from Mitsubishi. So coming around here to the uh, back and taking a bit of a look, first we'll take a look at the rear of the turret. So you see a, an access hatch there, but this is the 7.7mm um, uh, mount that's on the rear of the turret, points backwards like you see on some of the Russian KVs, which means that the, uh, the, the turret can be turned 180 degrees to bring that machine gun to bear from the front when, when the 47mm uh, um, wasn't uh, needed. Rear stowage bin, as I mentioned uh, last time, we looked at the um, looked at the tank um, recovery shackles and the uh, and the like, and uh, uh, using a lot of um, riveted construction, like a lot of tanks of the um, of the era here. So you're talking about um, riveted plates to um, to uh, to frames. So this is the um, the improved um, Japanese Type 97 uh, Chiha or Shinhoto with the new turret tank here at the Australian um, uh, Army Tank Museum. Hope you enjoyed the um, updated video and um, talk to you soon.